This area actually used to be a subdivision. In this recreated wetland, you'll find the typical water and waterfowl, but you'll also find artifacts that serve as a reminder of what once was. Manholes, a telephone pole, a house foundation, tile, bricks. But just how did human activity sink this place and turn it from neighborhood to nature center? The Brownwood neighborhood was founded by executives of Umbel Oil, which would later merge with Exxon. At its peak, around 1,500 residents lived in Brownwood. The peninsula Brownwood sat on was surrounded by the Burnett, Scott, and Crystal Bays. Residents loved the view that came with the waterfront property, but they soon began to notice that those very bays were creeping into their backyards. Between 1906 and 1983, this area sank 10 feet. The subsidence, or sinking of the land, was mostly due to excessive groundwater extraction. Land in the southeastern United States is made up of sand, gravel, and clay. Too much groundwater removal compacts these sediments in an irreversible way. As a result, these layers are able to store less water and land elevation decreases. Subsidence is a natural process, but it's normally on a small scale and takes a long time. It's human activity that speeds up and exacerbates the sinking of the land. The oil industry was, and still remains vital to Baytown's development. The city's growth was spurred by the discovery of oil and establishment of a refinery. The growth of Humble Oil in the Baytown area led to an increasing demand for groundwater. Brownwood being on a peninsula in close proximity to the refinery and Baytown caused it to sink at a rapid rate. With the decreasing elevation, Brownwood became more prone to flooding. Storms and high tides hit the area harder, making it more difficult to live there. Hurricane Alicia hit the neighborhood hard in 1983. Rebuilding was possible, but with conditions only getting worse and the cost of damages racking up, the city declared Brownwood a hazard to live in. Residents were forced to leave their homes and their properties were bought out by FEMA. After some development, the area became the Baytown Nature Center the water is now welcome and home to marsh and wetlands wildlife. I am delighted that they have done this to this area. It's kind of a bittersweet thing to come down here and see it, but it's okay. It's okay from what has been made out of this area down here. And it's, uh, I'm hoping that the district will still bring the children down here because it's a very important part of Baytown. Brownwood was just one extreme case of subsidence. It was beginning to be understood how widespread the issue really was. An article titled Disaster Part 2 Houston, published in 1974, reported on not just Brownwood, but how the whole Houston area was sinking due to the petrochemical industry using 190 billion gallons of water per year. Worry grew over the region's increasing vulnerability to hurricanes. The harris galveston Subsidence District was created in 1975 to reduce groundwater usage and slow subsidence. This graph shows how land compaction after 1975 greatly slowed from its previously sharp increase. Oil production, though a major user, of course isn't the only reason water is pumped from aquifers. Subsidence districts work to conserve water usage across the board and encourage using a mix of groundwater and surface water. Once the sediments have compacted, it can't be undone. And even after taking steps to reduce groundwater usage, the land will continue to sink before it adjusts. Residents of Brownwood experienced firsthand the impact human action can have on the landscape and those that live on it. Awareness of our consumption of resources is vital to ensure the future of not just humans, but all life on Earth. <laughs>